Welcome back to Turning Hard Times to Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor. Really pleased to have Patrick Highsmith with us once again. He is the chairman of Firefox Gold Corp. And uh, Patrick has had a long history of uh, many years with major mining companies as an exploration geologist, companies like Rio Tinto, BHP Billiton, Newmont Mining. Well, you don't get much bigger and more important than that. So he's uh, now uh, in his senior, more senior years. He's still a young man, but in his more senior years, uh, helping out this a couple of junior mining companies, one of which uh, is Firefox Gold. And um, he's had a lot of experience from early discoveries all the way up to uh, feasibility, pre-feasibility studies anyway. So he's run the gamut in the exploration industry and around the world. I think something like 250, more than 250 projects he's worked on uh, from places all around the world. And that has really helped him to scope out some good opportunities, uh, one of which is in Finland. And that's what we uh, he's here to talk to us today about. Thanks for joining me again, Patrick. Absolutely, Jay. Good to be here. You always call me a young man, so I'll just keep coming <laughs> back while you do that. So. Well, I guess it's all a matter of perspective. You know, compared to where I sit, you're, you're, <laughs> you're a young man. <laughs> yeah, it's relative, yeah. So anyway, um, I should let our listeners know, Firefox, it's FFOX in Canada, FFOXF in the U.S., 103.4 million shares. I saw it around 20 cents in U.S. money when I looked at it a little earlier today. Um, giving it a market cap, I guess, in U.S. money around $21 million. Well, you know, Patrick, you have a huge 800-square-kilometer land position in Finland, a uh, greenstone belt there that's underexplored compared to other major greenstone belts around the world. Just for starters, for the benefit of those that may not be familiar, can you give us an overview of the exploration efforts carried out so far by Firefox uh, and give us an idea of how those exploration, uh, how your ex- exploration work is proceeding. Well, Jay, I'm just back from two weeks in in Finland. Spent the middle part of November there, and really, it's it just uh, it's all sort of coming to a head at, at you know kind of at the right time, Jay. I, and mm-hmm. we've been exploring there since 2017 when we founded the company, and. We, we did so sort of near the bottom of the gold market, we thought, uh-huh. and, and the doldrums continued, of course. But we, we've drilled every year since we created the company, Jay, and and really we all know what happened in, in May of 2020 in Finland. Uh, our yeah. neighbor, Rupert Resources, announced a, what is now a 4 million ounce discovery uh, in the central Lapland Greenstone Belt, and that was really a kind of a vindicating pivot for the for the belt and the perceptions of the belt. And since then, we've, we've brought in really quality new institutional investors, of course, guys like Crescat Capital and SSI out of Zurich. And, and, uh, and we've, we've just uh, kept accretively drilling, Jay. And the real news this year, most people have been following, of course, is our Mustiarvi project where we've first announced some visible gold and we confirmed that bonanza grade interval with over you know 90 grams over uh, 1.35 meters and then we went back and undercut that in, in september and announced we drilled what, 17 meters of 16 and a half meters of almost eight grams there at musty rv so we've just completed four more holes at, at musty rv uh we're expecting the assays for those in uh, about january jay we the drill was just finishing the fourth hole when i left finland a few weeks ago um, so uh, we, we've we've gone back to Mustiarvi. We're about three thousand two hundred meters, Jay, in a in about a six thousand meter sort of first phase of this program that'll take us through the end of January, and uh, it's really going well. The team's hitting on all cylinders, and we're drilling four projects in this drill program, Jay. Four projects, and as you said, we've got eight hundred square kilometers, and there's really kind of how depending on how you look at it, there's sort of eleven projects in there. Uh, but four mm-hmm. of those are fully permitted for drilling, and we're hitting them all in this phase of drilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, what the objective uh, here at Mustard Yarby was? What um, th- this is your phase one program, I believe. Is your first phase? This th- this is the uh, at Mustard Yarby. This is the fifth uh, drilling program oh, that, okay. that we've okay. launched at the, at at that project, and uh, and really, it's the first time we've drilled it you know, within six months of each other because the results have been so good. And, you know, mm-hmm. we, we counseled with our technical advisors, and after the public information was out, uh, you know, the high grade was out to the public, we, we consulted with Quentin Henney, who 
who uh, has been an advisor to the company and our other technical advisors. And, and what we're doing with this phase, Jay, is pretty close step outs around that bonanza grade zone. As yes. we said, it starts off with, with visible gold over 90 grams and it gets a little thicker uh, mm-hmm. as we got a little deeper. And so based on the advice that a lot of senior folks and me and our young team putting our heads together with Carl, our, our CEO, what we did is we drilled three holes in the same section around that high grade. We, we tested it down dip uh, in a couple of different holes, and we also came and drilled it from a different direction. So we're really going to nail the geometry of that high grade zone with those three holes. And then yeah. we had this target out to the northeast, Jay. We went 750 meters away, and the fourth hole in this program is testing a, a geophysical anomaly and our first sniffs of gold on that big step out 750 meters away. So we're going to continue to do that. We're, we're going to focus where the gold is, and we're going to develop that in three dimensions to the best of our ability, but we're also not going to forget about those new targets. And so that's what we've done at Moose CRV. Three close to the high-grade zone where we hope to learn more about that geometry and one hole testing a new target. And, uh, and stay tuned uh, because if, if, if we're going 750 meters away, and hitting, uh, continuing to hit good gold, uh, that'll give us over 1.7 kilometers of strike of, of high-grade gold, Jay. So we're just thrilled with the rocks we've seen. We're thrilled with how that system keeps delivering. And uh, paved highway passing right through it, tremendous all-season access. Uh, so uh, most of the RV's been good to us, and that's just one of the four projects we're drilling. Yeah, and you're starting on a second one now. I think I read in your latest, one of your latest news releases that you have moved the drill over to a second one. Uh, as you, I think you mentioned, there are four drill ready projects, four of 11, but you're, you're starting on a second one now. Uh, you started drilling on a second one. Which one is that and, and what can you tell us about that one? You know, our other listing property, Jay, was called Yesio. Musti RV mm-hmm. and Yesio were the two we listed with. And Yesio is a huge property, about 30 mm-hmm. kilometers east of Musti RV, where we were just talking about. And it's divided into multiple targets. The northern one is called Utsamo. And as we press released, we did a huge base of till sampling program there, which is how Rupert made the discovery at Ikari, of course, really good exploration tool in Finland. And we took about 1,200 samples there. We press released those results. And I got the good fortune of pounding in the peg for the first drill hole on that Utsumo bot anomaly when I was there a couple of weeks ago. Uh-huh. And uh, we're going to drill several holes in that area, probably about 1,600 meters, I'm going to guess maybe in about five holes or six holes. And I think we're probably midway or two-thirds of the way through that. Now, this is on the major Serka shear zone, Jay, that big structure mm-hmm. that rips across the whole of the Lapland greenstone belt. There's a big mm-hmm. bend in it right here, and that base of till sampling gave us some really nice, robust anomalies in that area. So it's an early-stage property, but, boy, I mean, it's two kilometers south of Orion's big boulder discovery from 2017. There's gold all around this zone, and uh, we're just thrilled to have the focus from that base of till results. And uh, and the drill rig is uh, busy at Utsumo as we speak. And mm-hmm. um, next, it'll drop a little south of there, also on the huge SEO property, about 9 or 10 kilometers south to a prospect called Saitavara, where our mm-hmm. permits have just been issued and uh, and we'll also be taking the drill there. It might arrive before Christmas, but I imagine the bulk of that work will happen in in January. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's that's drill properties two and three. And then the fourth property is one everybody always asks me about: the good old Sarvi project, uh-huh. which is immediately north of the Rupert discovery. So so that one always gets attention just because of the neurology. And uh, and now we're completing more and more work in the area there. And Rupert just announced a new discovery uh, on their Area 1 property just south of us called Heine Central, uh, in which they announced some great uh, new drill results. And uh, that's a kilometer closer to our property boundary. So about two kilometers probably from our Sarvi property are the new results that Rupert just announced from Heine Central, which are also quite exciting. Wow. Very exciting, and I think Rupert has a market cap, I don't know, $700 million, something like that, maybe in Canadian money. Does that sound about right? I think it might be as high as 900 in Canadian money. It, it oh, moves okay. around a bit, uh, clearly, mm-hmm. Jay. But, yeah, they've touched a billion, I think, in Canadian dollars with this 4 million-ounce discovery. Uh, it's near surface. They've been able to advance it quickly. 
And the thing that's noteworthy about, noteworthy about these new results that are only uh, two kilometers from our property boundary is not only do they have a nice run, 56 meters, I think, of good gold uh, pretty near surface, but also uh, it runs about 1.6% copper, including oh. a high-grade zone of 4% copper over 10 Ooh. meters. Now, that's, <laughs> that's noteworthy to us, Jay, because people who've been looking at our presentation have seen that at our Sarvi property, which is also in a swamp, there isn't much outcrop there. But in one of the areas where we got some outcrop samples, we have a gram and a half gold and almost 2% copper in ah. altered volcanic rocks that sound kind of similar to the, to the new results from Rupert. So mm-hmm. it's a great package of rocks to be in. The guys have done a uh, uh, base of till sampling is happening there now to get ready for the drilling. And we don't expect the drill will get to Sarvi until about probably February uh, but nevertheless, fully permitted. In fact, new permits have just been issued. We've doubled the size of our Sarvi uh, project. We have about eight kilometers of strike length of, of a similar trend just north of Rupert, and it will see the drilling uh, during Q1 of 2022. So we're super excited to finally get to, uh, to drilling the Sarvi property with, uh, with good targets in hand. Well, let's see now. Nine hundred million dollar market cap compared to what did I say yours was? Something around twenty one million U.S. So twenty five, call it twenty four. Absolutely. Canadian. So uh, I think this gives yeah, investors look, a, a sense of the risk reward, and and of course you got many different properties to shoot at. It's is if one doesn't work out, there's possibility of another one. Uh, I just just want to ask because we're I think my engineer is telling me we're just about out of time for this segment, but let me ask you. you you have uh, it, it, always the most important thing uh, is the people, and I think you're very, very positive about the technical talent that you have assembled there. Uh, maybe you could just comment on the people that you have in your company, people, the, foot, the feet well, on the ground. That, absolutely. The, the team in Finland is amazing. We've got four full-time geologists uh, uh, and uh, also a junior team behind them, and they're led by Carl Lofberg, our CEO, who's based mm-hmm. in Finland. We do our business in Finnish. We stake tenements in Finnish. We interact with our surface owners in Finnish. But we've got an international team of geologists there, two young men from Czech, uh, myself, Rich Goldfarb, Quentin Henney helping out to sort of lend the gray hair. But I've never seen the intensity in a team of explorers like we have in Finland. And and you can see why, Jay. They've watched their neighbors, Rupert, make a multi-million ounce discovery. We've generated these projects. We've worked right through from the beginning. We've drilled every year. In good years, we drill more. And in bad years, we drill less. But the team is uh, hopefully seeing the support of of management, the board, and and finally a little bit in the market. And sure, we're at a pre-discovery valuation. But but look where Rupert was uh, four years ago, Jay. Not too yeah. much different than Firefox. So, yeah, so, yeah the team just uh, incredible to see the energy. Our exploration managers just built a house in the Arctic and moved his new wife uh, to the Arctic uh, within five minutes of our, of our core facility and 15 minutes from one of our projects. So uh, that kind of commitment is rare anywhere in the world, and uh, we couldn't be prouder of the team. And I think when our corporate video comes out in the first quarter, I hope folks get a chance to get to know the team a little bit and see some of those faces I'm always talking about. Guys like Miko Ninanen and and, uh, and our general manager, manager of exploration, Dr. Sven Hennig. They're just uh, absolutely top explorers. And I think these guys are going to get more than one discovery under their young belts. And, uh, uh-huh. and uh, hopefully the Firefox shareholders are appreciative when it happens. That'd be great. Just in summing up here now, uh, how well funded is Firefox, and and can you give our listeners some sense of what they should be watching for in terms of news flow as we uh, round out this year and head into 2022? Yeah, I think our last financials were at about 2 million Canadian. We're fully funded through at least 6,000 meters of this drilling program, Jay. And I say at least because we have millions of dollars of in-the-money warrants uh-huh. Uh, and that may be part of our financing strategy, but we will not be issuing equity uh, for the foreseeable future. So we have a strong, robust program. We expect to be drilling through May uh, without needing to raise money. And uh, the first quarter, January, we'll definitely see some initial uh, drill results, for, particularly from Moose uh, Before then, we'll also probably have a bit of results from sampling at Sarvi, bot sampling and trenching. 
And so that should be really steady news flow all the way through the first half of the year, Jay, which we're excited about. That's the good thing about winter drilling. We get this great uh, sort of counter news flow that we see in the warmer latitudes here in North America. Yeah, that's that's very true, although this year – Everybody's late from the lab, so <laughs> so drill, yeah. drill holes from the summer are being reported in January now. So, with it. but anyway, yes, it's a it's a Absolutely. point well taken to to be able to drill through the winter is really a, a big plus, no doubt about that. Well, thanks so much, Patrick, for being with us again. Uh, it is a very exciting story, one I'm looking forward to, and uh, so much more coming uh, our way. I can see that with all those different projects. So, thanks again for being with us. 